Although frequently the subject of makeover montages, the movie nerd role is often cast according to a particular actor's general vibe. Sometimes the real-life actor is near indistinguishable from his or her on-screen character, while other times they're completely different. This is what some of the most famous movie nerds look like in real life. It's difficult to imagine anyone but John Heater playing the titular character in Napoleon Dynamite. The movie, which became an instant cult classic thanks to its highly quotable dialogue and weirdly off-kilter vibe, was practically a showcase for Heater, who was something of an unknown at the time. It even led to him landing a role alongside comedy kingpin Will Ferrell in ice skating farce Blades of Glory. To this day, however, Heater is still most well-known for playing Napoleon. In fact, he'll probably never really escape the role, for which he was famously paid just $1,000. This is despite the fact that the actor really looks nothing like the character he's most famous for playing. Heater, who had a lot of input developing Napoleon, actually based him partially on his own brothers, who were constantly complaining as kids. But looks may be deceiving, as the actor himself is also a self-confessed outcast, telling Time Out in 2012 that he doesn't mind being typecast as the nerd. He said, I love playing those outcasts and weirdos because it's who I am in real life. Drew Barrymore has been acting since before she could walk, but one of her most beloved and iconic roles is the tortured high school nerd turned plucky reporter Josie Geller in Never Been Kissed. Barrymore's own youthful struggles with perils of addiction and fame are well documented, but it's in Josie that all of that pain is laid devastatingly bare for the world to see. Not least in the film's most heartbreaking moment when a prom ready Josie is pelted with eggs by a cruel classmate. The dream. Hey, write a poem about this, geek! <laughs> In a career-spanning interview with The Guardian, the actress opened up about how she never related to her peers growing up, even when the whole world was captivated by her presence on the silver screen. Barrymore related to Josie so strongly, partly because she herself was no stranger to rejection, following her highly publicized personal difficulties, which included being blacklisted in Hollywood as a teenager. Thankfully, she managed to bounce back and is now a settled married mother with a wide-spanning career as an actress, writer, director, and producer. She's certainly not Josie Grossi anymore. For many actors, being cast in an iconic nerd role can be their big break. Case in point, Christopher Mintz Ploss, who made his big screen debut as Fogel, aka McLovin, in 2007's Superbad. Since the movie was released, he's made a habit of popping up in the likes of Pitch Perfect and Neighbors, usually playing variations on that same character. But maybe he just is that kind of kid. As the story goes, casting director Allison Jones knew Mintz Ploss was right for the role after receiving a headshot of him taken on what appeared to be a camera phone. In 2015, she told The New Yorker, you could tell he was a kid who probably had seen the inside of a locker. According to an interview with Collider, however, Mintz Ploss thinks he was more like Jonah Hill's character Seth during high school, admitting to the magazine that he had something of a dirty mouth. Kevin Napor is one of the most memorable characters in Mean Girls, a teen movie filled pretty much wall-to-wall -wall with memorable characters. After getting into a spot of bother at the school talent show thanks to his racy rap, math nerd MC Kevin G eventually finds teen love with the prickly Janice Ian. How do you like me now? You like that? Yeah! Get some! Get some! In reality, life didn't go so smoothly for actor Rajiv Surendra. As he explained in an interview with MTV, the actor figured Mean Girls would be his big break and set about aiming even higher. He dedicated practically his whole life to getting the leading role in 2012's Life of Pi, only to be denied the chance to even get an audition. However, he learned from the experience in a big way. He told MTV, I realized that if I could put all my eggs in one basket, lose it all and fall apart, fall flat on my face, and then pick myself back up, I could do it again. And the next time, I'm not going to be afraid of failing because I already failed. The Emma Watson we know and love today is an articulate, vocal feminist and women's rights activist, unafraid to speak out about whatever issues are currently troubling her. Back when the world-conquering Harry Potter series began, however, the young Watson was terrified of admitting just how much she related to bookworm Hermione. I think also I spent a long time trying to pretend that I wasn't like Hermione when, of course, I was rather like Hermione. In a subsequent discussion with Bell Hooks for Paper Magazine, Watson further expanded on her nerdy school days. She said, I was the girl in school whose hand shot up to answer the questions. I was really eager to learn in an uncool way. In a super uncool way, actually. And then the character of Hermione gave me permission to be who I was. Although the actress initially tried to separate herself from the role, as Watson grew up, she realized that she'd learned an awful lot from playing Hermione. Watson eventually sought to replicate the character's strength, intelligence, and bravery, and hoped to become worthy of the character who'd made her famous. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.